It's good. It doesn't look good. It's live. See? It's being live streamed right now. <clears throat> You're good to start. All right. So call the meeting. So we have Jen and George. Mm -hmm. Call the meeting to order. Um, looks like we have a quorum. It's the first thing on the agenda. Uh, are there any adjustments required to the agenda? My eyes are so bad, I can't see those little. <coughs> the hand nope. All right. All right. <clears throat> Good to go. So citizens' comments. Um, takes us to minutes. Uh, we did get the minutes issued this week. Um, yes. First are the September 6th minutes. Um, any discussion on those? We have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? I see George's right. hand up. Yes. There he is. Yep. All right. All right. And uh, October 4th minutes. Any discussion? I wasn't at that meeting, so I'm not going to vote. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to accept the minutes. I'll make that motion. We have a second. Sure, I'll second it. All in favor? <clears throat> Bob is. Sorry, abstaining. I'm abstaining. I apologize. <laughs> but you're approving. I but think you're I would. And I think I'd know better to raise my hand. <laughs> that's my, that's oh, also geez. approved. <laughs> yep. George, you had your hand up, right? Yes. Thank you. Uh, chair report. Um, we had our food pantry today, so that was an exciting day. Um, I don't have today's numbers, but uh, let's see. I do have uh, previous numbers, which we didn't have at the time. Uh, let's see, and I'll go through those. So this is the um, distribution on the 18th, uh, so two weeks ago. Um, we had 138 households. We had six new households in uh, Alden Waldeboro. We had uh, three households from Bremen and five from Nobleboro. Um, total number of people was 351. Um, and that's broken down by 95 children, 191 adults, and 65 seniors. So it was another, and I think today was, seemed like when I was there, it was a pretty similar kind of traffic. So I expect a similar number from today. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that the Walderboro Food Pantry has prepared a petition, which will be uh, at the election next week, getting signatures. And basically the petition says, shall the town vote to, to help support the Walderboro Food Pantry, WFP, on an annual basis in the amount of $18,000. The Walderboro Food Pantry, a 501c3 nonprofit distributes healthy food twice per month to well over 100 food insecure families in Walderboro. That's basically the petition. Can I sign it? If, you, if you'd like, sure. If by chance uh, I have a ballot, uh, will that petition be sitting on the counter there someplace or? Um, I, can't, I can't because it's a petition that I have to acknowledge every signature. So I actually have to be there when you sign it. But okay. George, if you like, I could, did you, are you coming to vote next week or have you already voted? I've already voted. That's what I'm saying. I'll run it out to you and get you to sign it. How's that? Okay, I'm, all right. I'm not at work Friday or Monday. Okay. Tuesday. Yeah, I should be there. Oh, Tuesday. wait a minute. Uh, you can kind of coordinate that out of the meeting. Okay. We can coordinate that out of the meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> I signed the wrong one. Oh, you're good. There's two. It's two oh, sheets. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and that's all uh, basically what I had. Um, it's We're coming up to the giving season, as you know, and there's a lot of needy families. And I saw, I actually saw another email today that was requesting help. So just uh, 
people should be able, should do whatever they can do to help, I guess. Okay, and was that the one that Julie sent out? Yeah, yeah. Can I read that um, just for the record, or do you want to read it? The only my only issue is that she's it's to a limited distribution. It is. Yeah. So I think. Um, she sent it to BCC, so there's no good way. She to did know. send it to BCC. Yeah, yeah it's so a great email etiquette. And technically, it is a public document because it came from her email address. Is it? Is it? Yeah. All right. Well, then, if you'd like to share, please. <clears throat> so um, she says, I'm writing to let you know of a need in Walderboro for the upcoming holiday season. Each year, the town of Walderboro, through its emergency services departments and our emergency fund, provide boots, coats, toys, and a Christmas food basket to families that are in need. As you can imagine, we are expecting record numbers this year. To date, we are approaching 90 food baskets and have 50 families signed up for the coats, boots, and toys, and the sign-up period has not ended. To give you some perspective, the Lions Club used to provide about 30 to 40 baskets, and the town had about 30 families who received toys during the pandemic those numbers increased and held steady, but inflation seems to be creating even larger numbers. Some families are first time applicants who never imagined they would be asking for toys or clothing for their children. I spoke to one mom today who in the past has donated to the program and never expected to ever have to sign up for it, both her and her husband work. But between fuel costs and rising ch childcare costs, they're scrambling to make ends meet. I'm reaching out quietly to those of you who have in the past donated to our program. In the event, you may want to sponsor a family or donate again. Our food baskets serve all ages if you would prefer to help a senior. For those interested in helping children, we accept donations, or if you'd like to shop, we can provide a shopping list with toys and sizes. Many of the older children are not looking for toys, but sheets for their bed, clothes, school supplies, and basic necessities. Thank you. Um, and is John on the call? I don't. There's John. I, see him. I don't see him on there. All right. So it uh, looks like John's not here. Maybe he'll join us. Um, so we'll skip over. And Ruben, can you go right to the broadband update, please? Uh, broadband update, I'll keep short. I don't have any meaningful numbers or metrics. I'm I'm watching a number of of things in terms of what ISPs are up to and what projects they're on. But it's all sort of, uh, I'm waiting for a lot of data. Now that we're getting into the holiday season, I don't expect any real new meaningful news probably till after Christmas. Okay, thank you. Well, well I was just gonna just jump in on the, the broadband one because I wanna be sure where we were at from the last meeting because it seemed to go back and forth. Am I going to have the surveys for distribution on election day, or were we not doing that anymore? And I'm just pursuing the Island Institute grant. I hope we're going to have the surveys available on election day, but that's just my opinion. I, I still think getting the data would be useful. That's something I'd like to have done. I just wanted to be sure that yeah. was the back and forth conversation. I didn't Fair enough. Hey, Max, I, mean, I, I think I... it's important to measure people's appetite for fiber. Yes, Jen. I wasn't aware it was a question. I thought it was already a, agreed. Sorry. Right. Well, that's just that we had the survey and uh, Daryl only sent out the tax bills very recently. So we didn't have it on the warrant. But from what I assume the last meeting sort of covered is we'll have the survey uh, distributed to people after they vote on in the uh, next week so that we can still get that information. We're just expecting them to hand it back in within two weeks. That's what and I, what Jen? Do you, know, do you know how we can get it if we've already voted? Um, we'll probably just have to post something on Facebook and uh, also put an ad out in the Lincoln County News just to let people know. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Or, can you post it as a PDF file on the town website? Yep, I can do that. Okay. That's probably the best way to get it out. Well, I, I could even go a step further and just do a, like a survey monkey type link so that people just automatically fill it out online. Fantastic. So you can, and you could have that on our website or in Facebook, right? Yeah. 
Perfect. That's the way to do it. The paper might reach some people who don't use either. Yeah. Well, I don't think any of those are mutually exclusive. No. No. Mm -hmm. well, I was going to overload you. You do a lot. Well, I, I just wanted to know where we're at for the surveys because mm -hmm. I'll just, I'm not going to be here on election day. So okay. I'll just have to print out whatever I can and make sure that uh, whoever's going to be working the polls are aware of that. And it's just distributed as people are leaving. So how do you actually distribute it? So the election? what we'll have to do is uh, have a little table right next to the exit. And then when people are done right beside my table, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you or you could hand it out at the same time. I, I don't you mind. Could. Yeah. Yeah. And if you need someone to spell you, I'm happy to do it as long as it's not as long as you're not talking to people before they vote. That's fine. Great. We're getting them on the way out. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, hey, Max, that takes us right to the town updates. Town updates. So the first one is planning board items. Um, there wasn't that much in October. I, uh, the cornhole connection is opened across the street from us. So if you want to do some indoor cornhole, go ahead. They're having a tournament. I saw they've, some. They've been very busy. They've been great. Yeah. It's good to see that. Um, I'm going to be making some amendment suggestions for the planning board soon. Uh, it's to try and help uh, streamline their process so that they're not overburdened with change of uses. And that's just the start. We'll see how we'll see what type of changes they would like, but it's also to get some more process for notifications out and uh, just some record keeping items that we've kind of noticed in the past few years. Um, and there's a pre application that's coming before us for just someone who wants to build a single family home with resource protection. That's just something that has to go to the planning board. That's what the town wanted. So, um, other than that, nothing for the planning board. What was the next items you had on that list? For oh, the agenda? Uh, just, grants. Uh, grants. Grants. Um, I've been told that we are all set with the Maine Outdoor Heritage Fund. That grant is what helped us get a fish counter that we'll be, get, be putting into the Badomic River to do the alewife count. And it's also what paid for the uh, kayak launch that's at the rest area next to Hannaford. So we're closed out with that. We're all good. Um, we also got the assistance to no grant from Lincoln County Regional Planning. That's going to help with some trail design work over at Quarry Hill so that we can get a lot more public recreation over there. Um, we also just got some bulletproof vests grants to help reimburse the police department for their purchases this past year. And there should be, hopefully, this month, uh, body cams as well through a regional grant program that with the Mid Coast Council of Governments. So the police department should hopefully get money for body cams as well as some laptop upgrades. And uh, the efficiency main grant for the EV charging station. I did get some estimates back and they weren't really the best ones. I think uh, what I got for revision was about $24,000 and that was with the grants already included. Mm -hmm. So uh, I actually was just approached by Seth Hall today who said he was going to be submitting a grant tomorrow pretty much so that he would have it on Jefferson. And if I'm being very honest, uh, it doesn't make sense to have more than two chargers in town. And if he's already doing it, I'd say just let him go ahead and we can save the money. Where's he going to put it? I believe it'll be what parking spaces he has on Jefferson Street. where he Like across the street? Across the street from uh, his building, or no? Because those are town owned. He, he's he's saying that he has spots along his building that he owns. That he owns where the cars are currently parked. There seems to be two spots by the front door. Yeah. So he's saying that those are going to be EV charging station spots, or he's applying to have it under that. So I'm. 
I'm fine leaving it at that. Yeah. If he's going to put him in. That's true. I hope he succeeds. Yeah. yeah. That's great news. All right. For good order's sake, does that require planning board approval? I would have to actually check that because it might fall under essential services because it's I'd, I have to check that. I would think he'd want to check that before he goes mm -hmm. forward. Well, if it goes forward and it gets approved, then it would be that conversation. I think the efficiency main grants take at least, like you have maybe one to two years to get it installed anyway. So there would be plenty of time to have it done. It's just a matter of actually um, getting the permits. So there'd be time for that. So if he got the grant and theoretically he didn't obtain permission required to put him there, could he change the location under the terms of the grant and not violate the terms of the grant? I'd have to check with efficiency main, but I think that would be acceptable. I think that's fine. Um, I, I don't okay. know, those are all talking about the drive-in, yeah. we're talking about the drive-in spaces right across from his building. Nope. No, next to the next town. to his buildings. Like the same side I think of the they're saying behind the building, right? No, no, no. no. They're saying in front like of the building. If, if you're driving along Jefferson Street to the intersection and the professional buildings on your right, there are places where some cars are parking now. He's saying it will be there. It's right by the front door. Yeah. Oh, okay. there's, there's usually a Volkswagen parked there. So I, it's only I'm like sorry, I'm so skeptical that that is not impinging on somebody else's property <laughs> so that prop so that building actually does have a land survey that was done and that because there was the bit of a disagreement between or the assumption that seth or yeah seth and the professional building owned up to the uh, the clean parking lot that's in the back but actually the survey would show that um he owns up to telephone or the electrical pole and that we own all that green space parking lot because that was the original plan what he wanted to do and then the survey showed that wasn't possible so i again that was something that i was just told today and i mean we'll probably get into the tip discussion as well later right but that that was just the update that i had for the efficiency main one where i'm i may not proceed with it because it's 20 because it's the town pitching in twenty four thousand dollars on just that estimate i have and i didn't have any other estimates at this time um okay can, can we go back to um your first item the planning board yeah you were saying that uh, we got grants to for looking at elvers and um oh yes can is there a way for i don't know the answer to this so that's why i'm asking is there a way for the fish to get from the salt water up to the fresh water right now. So is there a, is there a ladder? How do they do that? Yeah, there's a fish ladder right off of the, um, on Mill Street. There's actually a fish ladder that would connect the natural fish ladder. You know, if you go to the little pocket park that we have on Elm Street, yeah, you actually get, can see the natural fish ladder from there. Huh. I, I think the way the rocks and ledges are, I think it's sensible if you're a good fish. So when you're when you're uh, when you're going to look for uh, was it was it are you looking for L? Did you say Elvers? We're going to look for no L L Y. I'm sorry. When you're looking for L wives at across from Hannaford's in that park, is that what you did? I hear you say that. No, no. no. What the grant does is we have a fish counter. It's in my office right now. Uh, so there's a so what we're going to do is work with who's the one who uh, hand counts it now, Larry Mid Coast Conservancy, not Mid Coast Conservancy. It's um, Madamic Brook, I think. Right. Oh, is it the um, Davis Trust? Yes. Um, right now they hand count it. So next year they're going to show us the spot where they do it put in the fish counter and then that's automatically going to count the alewives as they go through and you're trying to see how many alewives get through basically right is yeah, that the, to keep the track goal? of yeah okay to so have a more accurate count of the population got it okay good thank you um anything else 
Grant Snow. Because we're, we're heading right into the good stuff. <laughs> so, so this is old business. Um, and uh, the first item is the uh, TIF yep. district. So, so you want to start? <laughs> yep. Um, and actually, I'll quickly say one more thing on the town updates that the uh, tax evaluate revaluation happened and the tax bills finally went out. And before we go forward, and just a note on that. I'm not responsible for any of that evaluation. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. <laughs> so we've only been here nine years. <laughs> so you really haven't seen any movement. At the, at, at the risk of going against the current here, hmm. um, the speaking official hmm. the is a could be a topic of an economic development discussion. We have a really nice mill right now. Hmm. If, I mean, if there's a silver lining to my. George is coming in and out. Yeah, I noticed. George, you're cutting in and out a bit. Uh, can you disable the the video you have for? Yeah, that might help. Uh, can you? Does, does that help? I'm, uh, you're cutting in and out on me too, and I've got ordinarily pretty good internet. But anyway, no, all I was saying is that um, if we were doing economic development, promotion, we would be comparing our mill rate to other towns where people might think of putting a business. And I think our mill rate is probably quite good. good it's now, now 14, George. Yeah. I know. And what is it in Rockland? Oh, it's over All 20, right. I think. Damariscotta, Jefferson. Oh, Damariscotta, I, I think they're starting their revaluation as well, too. Um, but no, George does raise a good point. Uh, the mill rate is fourteen. So. Can, can we? Is the town comfortable with us using that as a as a uh, as leverage to attract businesses? I think it should be a press release. <laughs> I think that wasn't actually in the. I think that was uh, what was covered in the Waldboro section of Lincoln County News, at least. Damascotta's mill rate is fifteen point nine. Ah. Hmm. Uh -huh. For what it's worth, I was prepared for my wife and I were ready to get hit in the face with a much higher number than we did. Mm. And especially considering what Waldemar has done over the past couple of years as we've done with stuff, I, I get the numbers higher. But um, I was I was pretty happy once I saw how it all broke down. Like I felt it was it was at, at worst very even handed. Well, that's a compliment. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so if you're taking any any grief for that, it's not for me. Oh no, well it's not for me either, really. I, I know. I mean, who wants to pay more? But like, yeah. well, well, we get. I've got police and fire right. a couple miles down the road from my house. Mm -hmm. I've I've had issues where I've, I've had to call the police before, and they've shown right up to check on things. Uh, I don't feel like my money's being wasted, and it's a I'm town totally where we agree. try to take care of the other people that are here. Yep. And we're talking about these things like the food pantry and this basket program. Did I just say something? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I was, and it's also, I'm, I'm jumping on your wagon yeah. here for a minute. The school budget is like over 60%. Mm, yep. The mm. county budget is close to 8%. The town's budget comprises about 28% of that tax pie, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. So we're a very small portion. Of the, the town is a very small portion relatively of that tax pie. Yeah, and I read the letter that came with it when it talks yes. about being able to get staff to support these services. Like, right. And there's, every there's town in that. Maine is having the same problems mm -hmm. right. getting people. So, and it's easy to surely be sort of part of the machine, but. And I think I know yeah. the answer to this, but I assume those additional dollars are already allocated. So the real estate dollars? Yeah. Yeah, they reflect the budget that we that we voted on in June. Okay. So ahead. everybody's approved, implicitly approved that tax rate. And so there so, would be an increase in budgets for schools and things like that. There has been. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's good. I see Jen's hand up. Oh, yeah, Jen. Hi, guys. So to make it real basic for anybody watching, <clears throat> The way, and I appreciated how Daryl explained it. I watched the select board meeting after the fact, 
on YouTube, um, it, that this revaluation doesn't uh, mean that the town gets more money. The town budget being approved by us, voted in line by line, doesn't expand by this. All this does is, that's why the mill rate had to go down. The town is only allowed to collect what we have voted in and approved that the town may collect. The real issue is that the housing stock in town has, the valuation has, has exploded due to all of the people coming in and paying over the value of the actual value, paying prices. As Daryl explained, there were bidding wars in some places that drove up the price. In one example, um, from 250,000 to 386,000 on a pretty standard home. So that's the issue. It's, it's, it's not anybody looking to get more money. It's because when they compare, when Daryl has to compare our property values to similar properties, and you sold over the last few years, so many properties were sold at really explosively high costs. It drives the price up for everybody. Let's say it drives the value up for everybody because there's a lot of us in town who can't afford to move. And you know, even though, and our homes definitely are nothing fancy, but um, it's just the way things work in the world that we live in. So, can, can I add a can I add a tidbit yeah, to that? Yeah. Uh, the other kind of subtle thing that he mentioned was, and I don't remember the exact reasoning, but they didn't increase the value of land. No. So right. acre. So people with big tracts of land were not subjected to the same pain that expensive houses were, which arguably is a good thing to do when you figure where the big tracts of land are along the water. So the, the land values didn't climb as fast as they probably should have, which is a plus for people with the acreage. Hmm. And I, would, I would say that it, the increase was dramatic in my case and my home is not an expensive home. Yeah. Okay, any other but, discussion? But there had been no no upgrades reflecting the increased value for what a decade? 2008. Yep. Yeah, 15 years. That's a long time. It yeah. is a long time. Well, all right. From that revaluation, there is now actually money in the TIF program, and actually, I looked at the estimated 30-year timeline. And even though COVID has kind of set us back quite a ways, what we are annually going to receive, which is about 61,000, is what we projected we were going to get when we made this spot uh, four or five years ago. So it's actually kind of interesting that we're back on track now. <laughs> um, and everyone should have received an Excel sheet that outlines what the original value was in 2019 and what the 2022 values are for all these properties that are in it. And it shows how much is being captured in each one, as well as at the bottom, just a total of uh, 61,000 with the mill rate at 14. So can we talk about this a little bit? I was hoping so, yes. Good, about the spreadsheet, about the, uh, the valuation report. So um, we obviously 405 and 467 friendship, which is, uh, Sylvania. Sylvania is still showing up as a huge uh, negative yes. for us. So we're going to get rid of that next time around. That's the hope. That's what we're hopefully doing with the amendments. And then on Friendship School, it looks like you've got next round, it'll be 328. Will that be, will it go from, will the 328 be the new value against zero? That's what I'm estimating because that's what it says on the tax card. So we get all of that. That all of those dollars will go into the TIF. Yep. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Um, we've had, a, there's a couple of properties that still went negative. And so I, I'm curious about that. Yes. So the first one, well, minus, well, not Sylvania, but right. I'm just going in order here. 877 yep. Main Street, that's the Worcester parking lot. So 
So it dropped down, it dropped down a thousand quite some time ago. So based on what? I think it's just the the age of it and it wasn't and it's considered undeveloped. So kind of what George was talking about a moment ago, the value what the value of land wasn't really taken into consideration. It was just seen as this empty lot. So it's not seen as valuable. But it was on the market for substantially more than that. Uh no, the the parking lot was on the market for about sixty-five thousand. I thought it was like 89, but it was 69. It was 65. I even, remember. Even, oh, I remember. <laughs> but oh, even funny. 65 is still would still put money into the TIF into the TIF. Uh, no, market. the original value for that property was about well, okay, yeah, I see what you mean. It would have gone from 51 to 65. <clears throat> well, as I say, I think sorry, 52 to 65. The only reason that just dropped down a bit was just because. No improvements have really been done to it in quite some time. And when Daryl was doing his valuation, it was only focusing on just buildings. It wasn't focused on empty plots like that. So it, it's a thousand. I, it's not the worst one. Um, so maybe it takes the cake. But even ones that aren't town owned, uh, there's a lot worse down the line. Uh, this, for example, the one that is at 17 Kaler Corner Street. Yeah, that's, that's my next. Question. That's Hannaford. And that's why I was a bit surprised that it's actually dropped down by that much. And I didn't have, I don't have a reason for that tonight. They did a huge expansion. That's right. How could their valuation go down? I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to ask Daryl. I think we should ask Daryl. We should ask Daryl. I mean, that's another one of those that kills us. That kills the TIF. Uh, the, is the start date, what's the start date of the TIF compared to when they finished the renovation at Hannaford? Was it within the window of time? So the TIF started in 2019. Renovation, I thought, I feel that must have been before the TIF. Yeah, it was. So there, that's why. But it still shouldn't go down in value. By a quarter of a million, yeah. Because buildings have gone up. Hmm? And this is a building. Yeah. I'd have to ask Daryl why that's the I, way it I, is. Are Daryl's numbers based on a formula about square feet and age or about a, a transaction in the marketplace? It's based if something on sells, if something sold feet. below its uh, um, calculated value, what does that do? I, I'm not too sure on Daryl's whole process, but Bob is saying it's based on square feet. It's it's a complex formula, George, and square feet is one of them, and I believe market is another one. But he has some kind of magical wizardry he works when he comes up with this stuff. And no, I, I, I agree with Max. We ought to ask him to, to one of our meetings sometime to explain how he does that. Is there a chance that the Hannaford building, uh, there was a transaction within their organization which was uh, sold it at a lower price than... Daryl thought they were going to. I just speculating. I don't know. As I say, I'm. I got the numbers, and I. I should have asked Daryl about that. That probably was the one that really stuck out the most. But I just didn't get a chance to really ask him about it. Um, and then 126 Depot Street is the former Fieldcrest or the Brooder, that went down about ten thousand dollars. And. I think it's the same reason the land really, the building itself hasn't really expanded and land wasn't really taken into consideration. Then the, the building has been upgraded to put a business in there. That's right. Yeah. I'd have to see with Daryl about that one as well. Yeah, that might've been before the TIF date again. Yeah, I know there was the one business that's been in there since I got here, but I feel there was another one as well um, that was in quite recently. So I'd have to check. And then finally, there's 116 Cross Street. I'm trying to remember which that one that one was. 16 Cross. Um, I think they actually just had part of their building demolished very recently. So that's why it 
drop cross, by. Cross, cross Street is uh, Atlantic Labs and the railroad tracks and yep. the house with the interesting signs on the side. Yes, I believe. Yeah, and I think 116 did have part of the house demolished recently. So that's why it dropped down that much because it's just yeah there, there was yeah there was a residence on the other side of the street from the house with the funny signs that is gone now. So that I think that was it. So we would we would want Daryl to explain the, the two commercial properties that some somehow I mean every other property in town Drops increased so in value. Why would the two commercial properties Drops increase? So yeah. Yes. So we'd like to know about that. Um, and I think, and then we have a 10-5 that was just added in a bit later. So Daryl worked some numbers about what the 2019 value was for 10-2 and 10-3 so that it could be uh, subtracted and then put into the 10-5 so we're not losing any value from that. What does that mean? 10 2, 10 3, 10 5. Those are the lots that were put into the. So, what happened was in 2019, American Unagi was still going through the planning board process. And in 2020, I believe, there was a subdivision amendment that took away part of those two lots to create 10 5. Got it. So, that's it's the same lots, it's just a different named lot. If that makes sense. There's, there's a curiosity in that in the course of the last year, that uh, subdivided parcel, which is American Unagi, somehow came became 10 acres instead of six, if you look carefully at the tax bill, which I recently did. And so I got to talk to Daryl about how it grew four acres. But that's just a landowner whining. <laughs> All right, and so the the very very bottom line as as we sit right now, we're accruing value mm -hmm. in our in our TIF pot, yep. which is terrific. Yep. And are are we in a position where we could actually start thinking? Yep. About things we could do with that, because you're really looking for. A, it's not like you're going to pay that money to do a project, but it's a you have money moving forward now that you can use on a note or whatever, whatever means we use to, 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 to pay for whatever, yep. whatever project we're doing. So that's why two of the documents that everyone should have tonight. Uh, one of them is the use of tax increment financing funds. That's something that the state does not require, but uh, after talking with Julie, that might be a good thing for the town to just have as sort of a guiding document. Because uh, right now, if we want to bond the TIF money, like what we did back in June for buying the Worcester parking lot. Yep. That does have to go to the town for a vote because it's going to take out a municipal bond loan. Yep. And that is something that the state requires. Yep. But if we're going to use a thousand dollars, we don't have to go to the town for a warrant approval. We can do it with whatever process the town has always the select board approves it or whatever. The select board approves it. So it but in the sake of transparency and because I think I was promoting it this way, um, we should just have this type of process so that the select board just doesn't randomly one night spend $61,000 yeah. on what they think is considered economic development. Yeah. Uh, so can I, can I interrupt Max or somebody? Mm -hmm. um, when I was filling out my uh, ballot in my kitchen table, there was a whole page of how you might want to use this money. This is not binding. Didn't everybody get that? Are you talking about Sylvania? Yeah, I think you're talking about Sylvania. Well, yeah, but it also talks about what you might do with TIF money in there, I thought. It, it, wasn't there a couple of questions on that? I thought on that. No, that's uh, Friendship Street School. Well, either way, it was something to do with using TIF money. When no, you were no. just saying we should start thinking, I think we already did start thinking, at least so I I'd did. Have to, I'd have to look at the warrant but I believe the only money that the town is asking the residents for permission to spend are from the sale of the Friendship Street School. Right. It, 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 it wasn't permission. Things, though, right? The yeah, non-binding it was, it questions? Yeah. So yes. The non-binding questions were for what to do for Sylvania to okay. make 
what use you would like to see with Sylvania. That's what I thought was but friendship street school was binding. Those are binding yeah. questions. There was something that was non-binding and I'm almost sure it brought the word TIFF into the discussion. I'd have I'd have to look at what the warrant says because I George, do you have that there in front of you by any chance? No, I turned it in actually. All right. Well, I I mean I'll take a look at it before I leave the office today. I'm sure there's a copy of it somewhere I can just take a quick peek at. But I don't I no, I don't remember her doing that. But okay. I, I might have dreamed it. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm well, getting old. In, in my hope that I'm right, uh, we still have, that's why I wanted to get this little use of tax and current financing done and get your opinions on it so that we can present it to the select board. So can I say something on this? Yep, sure. So if my understanding is the intention is that where the rubber hits the road on this mm -hmm. is if it requires bonding, mm -hmm. it goes to a vote. To a municipal wide vote. Yeah. That's right. Yes. If it doesn't require bonding, right. then it's only the select board with a prior hearing required, public hearing yes. required. Is yes. there Those a dollar the, limit on that? No, there's no dollar limit on it. If it has, if, if we're going out for bonding mm -hmm. and we have to put the full faith and credit behind the town and provide usually matching funds for bonding, mm -hmm. right, that should go to the voters. Yes. If it doesn't require town matching money or bond bank roles by statute we're not required right to go to the voters and what max is trying to do you don't have a dollar limit on the non-bonded right because because it doesn't make sense to have it well, well, except that what happens when the TIF gets to be millions of dollars? Right. If we sit on this for, if we don't do any right. funding for 20 years and it, it's going to grow and it somehow does hit a million dollars, then, I mean, you can include a dollar limit if you would like. Um, I mean, well, right. It seems like you should, but just to kind of protect. Yeah. I mean, it's. You're still required to have a hearing. Right. No matter what, you're required to have a public hearing. Yes. And if people get up at that hearing and say, what the heck are you guys trying to do here? You're trying to pull a fast one or whatever. Exactly. And I mean, that I would think would make any select board think twice about mm -hmm. acting unilaterally. All right. So are you, do you want a dollar limit on this or are you, what are you, what is your suggestion on the, the policy? I mean, you know, I defer to the select board what they think is reasonable in a case like this, but. Well, because right now, I'll be honest, there are some projects I would like to get going right now. Uh, for example, there was the, the grant I mentioned for designing trails up at Quarry Hill. Yeah. I, we are getting 2000 and it might be something that's going to be more than 2000 it might be $2,500 so $500 to match it that can easily be a tiff use right I think if we but obviously the intent wouldn't be to stop something like that obviously the right. intent would be to stop a, a major project without town without right a town vote I think but Again, it's just to set some type of standard and precedence going forward. Because if something happens and I'm not here next year, <laughs> and let's say there's just this whole big shuffle, and here's here's your TIF document that says the only time you have to go to a town meeting for approval is when you have to bond it. Yeah. What's to stop some my successor or Julie's successor or future select board members from just saying, well, we don't have, it says we can just, just spend it. We can just spend it. We don't even have to hold a public hearing. Uh, That's why do, I want to have this. You got to have a public hearing. Yes. Not only that, I'm sort of depending your policy here, but there's a process. It, it, the idea has to originate in a committee. 
and it has to or from the select board or from the town planner. Right. I mean, there's a there's a process that he's setting up in this policy right. that doesn't allow any backroom dealing to go on. Right. That and I think that's what you really want to make sure you don't get involved with. I mean, it's hard to set an, an amount because you can tie your hands if you do that. Yeah, John. Do we have to be that specific and set an amount now? Or can we think about it over the period and wait? I mean, is this something that has to be done right away, Max? I would like to have a policy yeah. in place. Yeah. If there is a desire to put an amount on it, I think we could leave it at say, I can't imagine any project going over twenty-five thousand. So you could have a tier, maybe to a certain point. Right. It's here. It's the regular way. If it goes over a certain amount, there has to be a more in-depth town. I kind of, I kind of like that. Process. I really like that. So you could say up to twenty five thousand. It could be select board approval. Right. Over twenty five thousand, without bonding, requires a hearing and select board approval. Well, the hearings happening anyway. We have to have the hearing in any for, for any amount. Any amount. I yeah. you know I think we should. Yeah. I, like if we were let's say we wanted to do the film that we we talked about right the last couple of meetings and we decided it was a thousand dollars. We'd still have to have a public hearing to spend that. The way it would go is just the committee or the planner would say, we believe this should happen because it's part of the TIP program. It's one of those projects listed. We would go to the select board and there'd be, what did I say? A two week notice, I think in the paper or, or it would be in the most, so five business days. Uh, so, so if you wanted to do an ad right now, I'd have to put an ad in Lincoln County News for this week for next week's select board and that would be your public hearing Got it. requirement. Got it. So, so the, the, the risk, Bob, is that if we require um, a, a, a public vote to spend a certain amount of money without bonding, mm -hmm. that you could actually be pushing your project six months down the road. That's right. So you know? That's why what he's proposing is, is more workable in my view. So, so explain what you're proposing, Max. Isn't there isn't there a budget that the EDC has already in the that's at their disposal no. from the general budget? Yes. Well, could yes. could the could you do this where you rooted a certain amount of TIF money into the development process so that it became a, a, a decision of this board like it would if it was other money that was in that budget? Could it feed that budget? As a, as a way to, um, and then we could have internally or externally have a, a cap on it, but it, it might simplify things. If you want to spend a thousand dollars for a film, you surely don't want to wait six months. Yeah. I agree. No, and with the policy that's written out, it really wouldn't be waiting out six months. It's just waiting to maybe the next select board meeting. Although I don't, so, Bob, I guess I'm confused. Are you suggesting putting some type of limit on what would go for a public hearing? Because I'm... Can we do that? Well, the way I have this written out right now is as long as there's enough money in the TIF reserve, yep. if you don't have to bond it, that just has to go to the select board for a public hearing and vote, and that's it. And, and it doesn't matter if it's a dollar or a hundred thousand dollars. As long, so if next year yeah. when we get another sixty thousand dollars and we yeah. have one hundred and twenty in the reserves, yeah. If there's a hundred thousand dollar project, then it would do the select board public hearing vote. As long as there's oversight, which is which is what you're yeah. describing, yeah, I'm a lot more comfortable that there's so there's next, controls in place, which is what well, I the want. The select board's the oversight, really. Yeah. Not well, just the select board. I mean, there's a process before. I mean, projects are identified through a process, right? And right. Uh, and the, we, like we've done in the past, we debate the projects. Mm -hmm. Maybe here, I mean, they have to target economic growth. So right. we would be debating any project that went through. Yep. And I would assume that, that you can't approve a project without us debating it first. 
and and that and and then making sure i mean don't we have i mean if it has to contribute to the economic growth of the town uh and maybe you know that i mean we have identified goals in the comp plan i mean if we're just looking at it and saying does this meet the um the goals we've established as, as a committee and we approve the the project and then we talk about I mean, maybe it's matching funds or whatever, but then we talk about the funds after we approve a project. I mean, isn't that how it works? Well, I, I think I think Bob kind of hit the nail on the head. An idea originates someplace. Um, so if an idea originates in this committee and we have a quorum, we would uh, make a motion and pass it to take this proposal to the select board and then the select board would act on it. it, it that I think that's what you're saying, Bob, is that there's a there's a line that follows to get there. That's right. But the select board would act on it after a public hearing, George. We couldn't right. act would, on yeah, it, it without would, that hearing. Right. Right. But the and select the, the select day, board the select board would orchestrate that hearing. That's what I'm saying. That's right. Yeah. But there is a risk that you could have to wait a month. There's a risk yes. that if we if we came up with a a, a project that we wanted to yeah. move forward with, and the and the select board meeting was next. Let's say next week. Next because Tuesday. it is next week. <laughs> right. You, you could you could act tonight and have it in front of the select board with a five day notice requirement, public notice. You got five days in there for yeah. I may have notification. To, I may have to change that to just five days instead of business days because. Uh, for the newspaper, we're closed on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I, I might just change that if that's fine. But five days, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's just me. That's just me, though. Maybe it's not a bad vehicle. So if it's bonded, it means it's a lot of money, typically, right? Yes. And that would require a town vote. Town, yeah. Anything that's not bonded would require a. a uh, select here, a select board hearing yep. and select board approval. Yep. Yeah. Don't you, I mean, don't, don't, I'm not nervous don't. now because there's not that much money in the kitty. Yeah. I, I might be more nervous in a few years down the road. If if you were spending TIF money, that's and I'm maybe I'm going to show how stupid I am, but if you've got TIF money you're considering spending, then you don't need bonding. If you've got the money from the TIF program, or or by well, misunderstanding bonding. Well, yeah, George, think of it like this. Um, uh, if we were doing uh, a utility, exp the utility expansion that I want to do last year, where it would extend the sewer and water up to into the swamp, Is into the, the swamp, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, that was going to be a $24,000 engineering study. So that didn't have to, that wouldn't have to be a town meeting. That would be something a select board could just approve because that was under $60,000. Right. But then uh, Gartley and Dorsky come back and say, well, this project's going to end up costing $2 million to implement. Hmm. We would have to bond the TIF money right. so that over X amount of years, that money would go towards that $2 million project. Right. All right. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So you, and you can, so you could spend future TIF money on that, on that bond project, bonded right. project. Yes. And that's why it needs the bond. Okay. Yep. Yes. That's why it needs the bonds. So, I'm going to get off this meeting quite shortly. Is there anything that we need to vote on where you might want me well, here? That's why I wanted to just check if anyone had any notes or changes to the use of tax increment financing fund policy that's being suggested, because I'm hoping to go to the select board maybe next week. Let's go with that. And I think if I think, do you need a motion to approve that? Uh, unless there's any amendments people have for it. I, I amend it to say five days, five days instead of five business days. Right. I get, that gives us a little bit. It gives us a little better yeah. reaction time. Okay. Yeah, I think, I'm, you know, and, and we can we can revisit it as the TIF grows. Mm -hmm. Change so, the policy. Change the policy. Yeah. All right. Does that make sense? It's good Sorry. work. Thank you for doing the work. So is there a, perhaps a motion to forward it to the select board as go ahead with I'm, your amendment. I'm not an appropriate one to make that. that oh, okay, I'll make the I should so, sit, uh, uh, sit out this one because I'm going to vote on it again and that's not fair. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, the uh, what do you use of call tax that? increment financing funds policy. That uh, with the change uh, with the single change of five business days to five days. Mm -hmm. All right. So 
there a second? Second. A okay, discussion? All in favor? The hands up and Bob eyes. I'm abstaining. Stay. You're abstaining? Yep. yep. All right, good. So I'll present that to the select like board next week. It's kind of exciting that the TIFs actually. It is. Getting a little momentum now. Yeah. Be a real thing for the town. It's very exciting. Well, and George, you said you have to get off soon. I, yeah, I'm I'm leaving. All right. I got my I went to a different uh I think my connection got better. I don't know if you noticed it, but I did. Oh yeah, it seemed to get much better. better. Are we gonna talk about potential TIF projects like brainstorming stuff? Well, yeah, that was the next thing I was gonna get into. Hey, George, any uh, TIF projects that you want to table? No, Are you table or propose? Propose. Um, propose. I, I really, I can't believe I'm going to harp on this, but the, the I'm sure I saw something about tiffs in the um, in the warrant in the ballot. But I'll I'll double check when I get out of the meeting tonight. Yeah, no, I I'm I'm gonna get out. I can completely rely on you guys to come up with creative uses for money we don't quite have yet. <laughs> Future right. money. <laughs> all right thank, thank you, you george um night right. george night george oh, thanks, Alan. so so i'll be quick since it is getting to eight o'clock um and we actually started on time pretty much so yeah unusual so i do have the i did send out the tiff amendments although it's pretty much pages eight and nine that show the changes. And that's just going to be some additional projects on the list. That was on the, your first email, right? I believe so. Yeah. And that should address the, the amendments that we talked in the previous meeting for any new projects that people would like to see. So this, so the projects include demolition, alteration, or repair or reconstruction of municipally owned structures. So that's to keep in mind of the Hoss's house. If the wall of our residents want to demolish that or put some money towards repairs, but it could be used for other buildings in the future as well. Hiring of professional services for preliminary designs of site work projects. Just real, sorry, where yeah. are you looking at right now on your This document? is page eight. I'm sorry? Page eight. Thank you. Table two, fiscal year 23 amended oh, okay. project list. Got it. Uh, then there's public safety improvements to areas along public roads with notable vehicular crashes. I wanted to include that one because uh, Maine DOT has their village partnership program. So this could, I mean, I'm having that in there just in case, but we may be able to, as part of one of the uh, prior project things, this can actually be part of the, our match for that program as well. So, that, so that's a potential TIF project we may want to do. So I, I do have a question about that. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we've got a, a lot of work going on mm -hmm. at the, intersection of uh, Maine and, and Friendship. The fun one, yes. And and yep. we're, we're redoing curbs for, I think, probably for wheelchair access, yeah. maybe? Yeah, I think DOT is doing some ADA accessibility stuff there. So I had a thought of um, upgrading our sidewalks. Because mm -hmm. right now we've got kind of paved, yeah. which is unsightly. And so, I, I know it's probably a low cost way of solving a problem, but so I'm, that's, I'm just curious about like bricks maybe or walk up some kind of nice. So that's all the DOT partner village partnership program that I'm talking about. That they their program, hopefully this doesn't rustle any feather, ruffle any feathers. It's similar to what they did in West Cassett a few years ago, where they took out the odd street parking that was on uh, Route One and made it the brick sidewalks that you see there. So it would be very similar to that. So I think we should really look look into something like that. I think that'd be a great idea. And that's a potential tip project we can do. Yep. All right. We'd probably have to bond the money for it, but I would assume people would be fine with freeing that place up and trying to reduce the vehicular crashes down there. <laughs> um, and then the last three projects, um, I put something in there for child care and adult care facilities, just because we did lose the Head Start program. There might be some interest in either uh, creating a new one or maybe even just some uh, voucher program system. 
Well, I like you that you've included adult care mm. in with that. It gives us. I kind of have to because no, my, no, dad, it's, vol it's my dad volunteers with respite care. So I feel if I don't do it, he'd ask me why I would do such a thing. <laughs> uh, and then number 18, it, this number 18 isn't really uh, an economic one from its initial look, but uh, it's enhancements to monomic water, the monomic watershed to protect water quality and wildlife dependent on the ecosystem. Um, this one, I think, is a good one for us to have. I think with the Madomic River project, the town really does care about that watershed, and it is an economic engine. The, yep. the only comment I'd make on that, Max, is mm -hmm. that you've limited it to alewives and salmon. And I would use a Including, more general term okay. to, to not exclude any marine life. Yeah, I like that. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Do we get salmon up the Madonna? I don't know if we've ever got them or not. Uh, do you know that? I feel like I feel I had that when I was doing one of the grant programs. Wow. But yeah, that would be exciting. Why don't you go down to the Po and test that at some point? <laughs> I know they put brown trout. They stock brown trout on the on the other side. They do. Yeah, it's fun. But anyways, that's what I wanted to do for number 18, just improving the ecosystems of the watershed because that's definitely economic. Um, yep. Um, and then number 19. Uh, oh, I realized that it goes into nine as well. Uh, so this was based on what Sonia was suggesting with the more tourism one. Yep. Uh, number 19 is creating a grant program to incentivize businesses to incorporate art into streetscape and facade improvements, or alternatively, establishing a grant program for town funded art projects to promote all the boroughs art community. And that is something that Richmond actually does have for, because when Richmond and Bodenham did theirs, they focused on making grants to improve their downtown areas. So that, the art community is really taken a hit with the pandemic here in Waldeboro. We've lost. A lot of artists. Yeah, we have, but this is something that could allows us to try to find ways of bringing it bring back. back. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Well, it's interesting when I saw this next because when I was traveling a couple months ago um, over to Vermont, I went through Bethel and mm -hmm. Bethel Man. I don't know if anybody's been through there recently, but there's there was a building that caused me to turn around and go back and pull off to see what it was. Fabulous fabulous mm -hmm. mural on all sides of this building. And it is a community building, very colorful. Um, and when when you drive through Route 1 here, mm -hmm. there's several buildings that would be amazing to do something like that too, because it will give people reason to pause in Moldovaro mm -hmm. on Route 1. Like, oh, mm -hmm. what else is here? Yeah. You know, and um, it it's something you can get the kids involved in the schools and you know they'll be driving by going i helped paint that you know things like <laughs> that it it's a sense of pride i think for the community if we can get something like that going what about the uh, community center and the the uh, health is, is that is there any way that that could be part of it could economic be could be in a few ways um that's why i have the uh the engineering for the site work project is one of them as well. Um, from my discussion with the state, we have sort of the catch all projects on page seven, and this is number 11, where the TIF funds can be used for any costs associated with local matches to federal, state, regional, and foundation grants that promote economic development. And Technically, we are getting a federal grant for those projects. So I doubt it's something to run by the state, but arguably that's something that could. But if we could, it, 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 you know, if we could take it from kind of an ordinary community center to something really, you know, transformative for the town, then, well, then we could we could add dollars to that project possibly. Well, and again, then there's like. Um, one for child care and adult care facilities as well. If Head Start says, well, we want to move into a community center, then we can have TIFs allocated and say, well, it's going to help create child care in this building. And having a health center is going to help yes. bring, motivate people to move to Walter. So are all of those 
uses you're talking about covered under Title 38? Yeah. They are. Then we're, we've got it. It's in there. It's in there. Yeah. And I don't think it's a stretch. I think yeah. saying, hey, you know what? If we have a beautiful community center, a healthcare center, we have a, way, a nursery that could help yeah. take care of your children. Those are things that it will attract families to Waldeboro. Yep. Yeah. Well, and it's just something where yeah, I always have to check with the state first and say this this passes this this passes the straight face test, and obviously I have to hear if they say yay or nay. Uh, and then the last item I have on here is associated expenses with the expansion of broadband service to unserved residential and commercial areas. Yep. Um, and you've allowed unserved to be defined by the state, which is now 100 by 100. Yes. If you don't meet that, you're unserved Correct. or underserved. Yep. Broadband and unserved areas are defined by connecting authority. Yep. Um, I have that in there because I, and actually I feel I missed the one for housing. Can't believe I forgot that one. But um, that was just one of the more recent new ones that the TIF program was amended into this past year or back in 2020. So I wanna have that in there, especially um, once we go through the planning grant, which would fall under um, item 11, which we already have. Once we do that, um, number 20 can just be if we wanna do a broadband uh, expansion without using a grant. At a, at a smaller scale, and I'm gonna have Storm Mountain Road at the front of my brain until they have, till they're connected. Um, I know I've sent a couple of emails to you and Alan about line extension grants, which is the mm -hmm. Connect the Ready program. Yep. So that road has fiber crossing the entrance and the rest of the house is down there need fiber run to them. Mm -hmm. One of the versions of Connect the Ready would involve a match. I don't know what that dollar amount would be. LCI or whoever would have to tell us. Focusing on LCI because it's their fiber that crosses that entry. Could this, could these funds be used for that technically? Yes. Okay. Because it's matching a grant. Um, it would just have to explain why it's economic growth. Okay. And that's why I wanted to get this policy before the select board. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this just get, this is kind of a, uh, just a broad scope of possible ways that we could look at you know yeah. what kind of projects we right. can look at. So but there's obviously things in between yeah, that well, makes sense. That's my pet interest. So I wasn't gonna yeah. not ask. <laughs> so what I'm hoping for is maybe uh, hang on. Yeah Jen. Oh. I just wanted to make sure I understood Max did did you mean when you said you left up the housing part that you were going to add it back into this thing? Yes I there was one project item that the state's uh, statute allows and that's for uh, projects that can help with affordable housing projects. So rather than extending sewer and water and saying, well, if we do this, we're gonna bring in jobs, we can have it go towards uh, the knowledge that there's gonna be affordable housing project at the end of the road as well. So um, I don't know what a good example would be. Um, um, well, do affordable housing up past Taylor's Corner. Sure. Let's go with extend that. up there. Yeah, if if we were approached by someone tomorrow saying, "Hey, if you just extend the sewer and water two parcels over, we can build this big affordable housing project," that can be used for that is an eligible project for the TIF funds. Thank if you. I got that project amended into this, so you don't yeah. have to tie it to economic development per se. You can also tie it to affordable housing. If I get that project included in there, and right? I'll, yeah, I can if you that. get that, yeah. yeah. But you could make the argument that having families move into Waldeboro is going to increase economic, it's going to, you know, even if it's affordable housing, it's still. Again, I'd rather have that project actually listed in it so we don't have that type discussion. of discussion. Yeah, yeah, so we don't yeah. have to leave it at that broad uh, assumption. Did that answer so, your question, Jen? Yes, but just, just as a reminder to everybody for for potential workers that our businesses are desperate for, mm -hmm. um, you know, that by itself being able to, I mean, Miles Hospital, as John said a week or two ago, lost some great candidates for jobs because they couldn't find, they couldn't find anywhere to rent or buy within commuting distance. 
So that is that is an economic growth problem. But I just want to have it as a dedicated item. So I just wanted to know, does it make a difference on this if you change the wording from affordable housing to workforce housing? Does that matter in any of this? Because it's can you include the it, both affordable just, and workforce housing? But it addresses exactly what Jen's talking about. Yeah. Right. Um, well, the state statute has the language, but we can have it amended as long as we're referencing that's it's still supposed to stay in that tent. So it can say workforce housing instead of affordable housing. But, can, but can at the same both? time, you have to be careful both. because it, if you call it workforce housing, then when it's time to for families to move in, mm -hmm. you got to make sure they're part of, you can't, you know, they can't be disabled, for example, just looking for low cost housing. Right. Well, so, so I think you got to be careful on how you. You can't discriminate no matter what, right. like it, housing mm -hmm. is housing. And, yes. and unless it's a specifically 55 and over or something like that. But as far as what neighborhoods are, are open to, to new housing developments, sometimes the wording makes a difference mm -hmm. uh, as far as you know having it be welcomed. Okay. So I'll include one that goes. So am I including one that says affordable and workforce housing, or am I just saying include or focused on workforce housing? I would do both. Okay. Or just affordable work. Yeah, I mean housing. it doesn't help. Affordable and <laughs> if it isn't affordable, housing. it's not going to get you there. Mm. I do like that idea. Well, you're saying something different if you say affordable workforce housing, as opposed to saying affordable work, backslash workforce, workforce housing. and affordable housing. Okay. I'll I'll have some language by the next. Okay. Week. So, right. what I would like everyone to do is think if there's any projects you want added or removed from this, because. I want this on the June warrant. I want to get that done so that we can be so that one we can get the Sylvanian Hoss's house off of it just for that one brief moment so that we can then get 555,000. Yep. And then we can just get some project lists in there so we can get some work done on that. And then just uh one other really quick question at one time we talked about um, doing something with the land behind Sylvania. And I know there's a whole Sylvania task force, but that goes to the water. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, is that covered? If we decided to use TIF money to develop that property to make it, you know, commercial slash recreational or it, however we do that. Yeah. It depends what project is being done. Um, I mean, right now, one of the items we have in the project list now is trail work, for example. And so if Sylvania is out of it, we can still put money towards trail work, for example, okay. because it's still trails. Okay. And again, we have the catch-all item where if we just get a grant to help build out Sylvania for some economic growth reason, even if it's not in the TIF district, you know, use the money to make a match for it. Yep. All right. So everyone just thinks on those items. All right. Got it? Thanks, Max. That's all I got. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, any new business? Just one. Oh, sorry. Yes. One question to ask Jen. Can you hear me, Jen? I can. Okay. <laughs> There was an article in the recent Lincoln County News about the Walterboro Business Association. Yes. Do you mind expanding on that a bit, telling us what it is you're trying to do? Sure. Uh, I haven't seen the article. Um, I don't. It wasn't online when I was looking. Um, so I uh, I spoke to our Walterboro reporter, lovely Elizabeth, young woman who um, she was interested in our challenges. So basically we, we spoke about wanting to find out from our business members how they felt about going forward. Uh, our board 
is uh, has nine seats on the board. And over the COVID years, it is uh, gone from nine board members down to three left, which of course is not a quorum, um, among other things. <clears throat> so the idea was to find out if people were interested in revitalizing the board or reconstituting, I guess reconstituting is a better word, the board and participating uh, as board members to do that. Uh, and if they were, then we do have the finances to build out a new website for the association, as well as to create a digital map and guide that would be very much mobile friendly. Um, and uh, then we could revitalize the organization. Uh, businesses have been under incredible pressure over the last two years when I've spoken to various people, staffing has been really short. Um, the stress of trying to operate where you're pivoting all the time. And uh, this season was a little better in terms of tourism, but not in terms of staffing. And uh, it's been very, stressful for many of our businesses to keep it all together. And there are still businesses that have to close with no notice on a day because someone uh, calls in sick. Um, and I've seen it, it's really funny, I've seen it even recently where you don't have the pressure of being open even more hours for the tourists. So um, there really wasn't the energy for the last couple of years. I mean, we held a few board meetings, but uh, there just wasn't the energy from the membership or all the board members to really try to find any solutions about going forward or not. So that's basically what I discussed with Elizabeth. And I asked um, people if they were, if they wanted to, to contact us at info at walderboroughbusiness.org uh, either with suggestions or questions or anything or offerings of interest in serving on a board. Um, but uh, I haven't heard from anybody yet, but that's what we did. That's what I spoke to her about. Thank you. Okay. Um, any uh, new business? And I do have one comment, which I should have made earlier, but I didn't, which was last night was Halloween in Walterboro, and the town did a phenomenal job, as they usually do. They had fire trucks, and, and I didn't walk down but because I was handing out candy, but we had at our house, which is on Main Street, about 200 children wow. coming for candy. So that was, uh, it was just a really pleasant, wonderful experience. So I just thought Good. I'd share that. All right. And uh, on that note, we are adjourned. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, John. Good night.